I've said it a million times. 2011s are the supercar of the gun world, which means they are allowed and maybe even encouraged to be a little bit crazy and over the top. One of my favorites over the past few years has been the Fowler Vanta 9. It fully embraces that crazy supercar design ethos. And if there's one thing I know, if you take a good looking five inch 2011 and you make a four and a quarter commander out of it, that'll be the coolest gun in the room. Case in point, this is the new Vanta 9 Commander, and dear lord. So several years later, is the Vanta 9 still one of the no-brainer 2011 buys? Let's find out. Okay guys, before we start jumping in the gun, fair for you to know uh, the relationship between us and Fowler. So we did the first Fowler Vanta 9 video, uh, I don't know, two and a half, three years ago, somewhere in that ballpark um, now. Um, uh, I paid for this gun back in the day. Uh, this was a purchase when it came around to the Commander was coming out. Um, we were not involved in the uh, development or anything like that, but uh, we did get a couple of the first production guns. They sent us the guns for the video. Um, I would just tell you, hey, a couple of the folks over there are uh, friends of ours. Yeah. Uh, that does not prevent us from coming here and giving you a fair shake. If you feel we're not giving you a fair shake, you can call us out on it. I think you'll find it to be fair, but also fair for you to know, hey, we did not pay for the guns and uh, we do know some of the folks over there. With that said, let's move on. <coughs> okay, guys, uh, the world is... Uh, can, you okay there? Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, the world is um, is uh, <laughs> a little chaotic right now. Um, as you've probably seen, probably not a bad time to have a little bit of body armor in your life. Um, sponsor for today's video would be RMA Armament, uh, veteran-owned company, American-made products. Uh, they're in uh, Iowa, I believe, yep. right? Um, mm -hmm. And you know what is in Iowa? Corn. That's more than even I could come up with. Oh. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you beat me to the punch. I was gonna have nothing. Lived out there for on a bit. that one. Um, they're the first uh, armor company to make female-specific body armor. Hey, so if you're trying to arm up your chick or something for the apocalypse, um, that would be a good freaking idea. You know, so it has like sections right here for like the danglies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. What? Uh, the 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 you know the danglies. The danglies. You couldn't think of any. Continue. It's a science show, everyone. Uh, level four plate, 1165 multi-curve. That's what this bad boy is. Um, lightest American-made level four plate in this price range. So these are uh, 250 bucks. Not a bad deal at all. 6.8 pounds, 10 by 12 pr protection. Again, uh, made in America stuff. Um, I haven't been shot in these yet, so I can't, um, t you know, I assume it's going to stop the round. I haven't been shot in it, uh, trying to avoid that. Well, and they are NIJ certified, which is what you always want. So. There we go. Right. Yeah. So good shit. You guys check it out. No code or anything for you. Just letting you know about some cool stuff. Appreciate it. I'm with the show. Okay, everyone. If you want to just hear about the gun and, uh, you know, specs, triggers, how's the safety, uh, fit, finish, all that kind of stuff, you're going to want to skip ahead a little bit in the video. But if you guys want um, a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it a hot take, but maybe a little bit of um, just kind of like, 
discussion on the times that we're in, this would be a section you would still want to tune in to. Um, we've talked about this. I'm, I'm fairly passionate. Tuning in pertaining this. specifically to the market of 2011s currently. It's it, it, it's a discussion about the the yeah the market of 2011s because the, the I think it's important that you guys understand what's going on right now. So any manufacturer right now that that's paying attention, especially manufacturers that were in the like customization of Glocks business, for example, um, they can see the writing on the on the wall, which is 2011s are here. They're popular. They're probably here to stay. Yeah. I mean, no one can ever predict that, but we we know trajectory of 2011s is just like through the roof right now. Yep. And that's cool. That's good. That means that there's a lot of people getting in the game. But there's a pro and a con to that. The pro is, hey, cool, we've now got a lot of options. More and more options are coming in. The con of it is I think that we need to get a little bit, like a bit realistic in terms of um, what you're getting for your money these days. Because there's a lot of people jumping in the space, and some of them haven't really put in the time to actually get good at this. There's this thing that's happening right now where it's like, okay, just because you came out with a 2011, well, it must be $5,000. And that is not accurate. Like that, that is not the reality. And, and especially those of us who are in the 1911 and 2011 space, it's like, we have to remember that while a $4,500 gun is based on sort of how I bracket things out, I would say it's at the high end of the mid tier. Yep. Okay, that's not even a high end 2011. Yeah. We have to also remember that is a very expensive pistol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, months of mortgage payments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like that's, Nine Glocks, you know, wrapped up in, into the price of one gun. Ballpark. Yeah. You know, yeah, ish. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let me give you an example. Um, to make a proper 2011 requires real skill. Um, one of the days that we shot this, uh, Kyle, I hope you don't watch this video. If you do, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, a buddy of ours, he had a, a Phoenix Trinity out. And this isn't really meant to throw shade at Phoenix Trinity, but I guess kind of de facto it, it does. Which is just to say... That was a $5,000 MSRP gun. And it's an insult to my intelligence as, a, as like kind of a, a 2011 whore to go. Aficionado, if you will. That's a $5,000, that's what we're calling a 5,000 2011? Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, I, I mean, like, the tolerances, fit, finish, all that kind of stuff was, was it was staccato. It was yeah. a rebranded staccato level gun, but it's $5,000. Why? It, and that's my point, is like, just because you decide to make a 2011 does not mean it's $5,000, okay? Like the Vanta at 4,500 bucks, technically cheaper than that. It's like, these aren't even competitive with each other. Like these should not even be discussed in terms of like this or that. Guys, let me go ahead and spare you the 30 minute video. It ain't even competitive if that <laughs> happens to be the two guns that you're looking at. Um, so the other problem that I'm gonna highlight is I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I kind of debated if we wanted to go there, but I do think that there's a degree of, of relevance in the point, which is inside of like the gun media landscape, while I don't really in many ways consider, <laughs> consider us gun media, I guess like technically we've Ish. kind of fallen into this boat, right? Sure. Um, there are not a lot of people in the Instagrammer and gun tuber space that um, really know a lot about 2011s, okay? And let me be clear when I say this, I am not a gunsmith, I do not manufacture anything, like I'm a glorified bonehead. Um, but I have spent a lot of time on the platform, I've owned a lot of them, um, and I, I know what it is that I'm looking at, fundamentally. You've also had like multiple hours long in-depth conversations with the people building these at a high level. From a bunch of different manufacturers. Yeah, so it's like that, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's like, I mean, I have some reference of what I'm looking at, yeah. you know, and, and like, you know, a, a case in point where I think we are as a community is, is you'll see sort of the, uh, I wrote it in the notes this way, so I'm just gonna say it, the army of staccato influencers. Um, sort of wave the flag of, of like, this is the best thing ever made. And it's like, Scott's a good gun, um, but it is the Glock of 2011s. Like, if you're waving the flag saying, like, this is the best thing ever created, I'm sorry, but you just don't know a lot about 2011s. Um, you don't. It is it is a good duty use 2011. That's why it is often used as a duty gun inside of departments. But it's like, to say that this is the, the pinnacle, it's like, I hate to break it to you, that's the entry point, dog. Well, and in comparison to these, incredibly different. Like, vastly different. And, and you know, so, so all I'm saying is, like, you know, 
We've got to be realistic about this, both from a manufacturer's jumping into the space, pricing their guns at sometimes ludicrous prices. Um, we'll talk about the pricing of this and kind of, you know, where we're at on the scale of that. But it's like, you guys also need to understand, it's like you're watching content sometimes from people that it's, it's like, hey man, you're, 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 you're trying, you're doing good things, but it's like, make less bold claims. Like understand more about the subject matter you're dealing with before you make the bold claims. Case in point, I don't do long range content. Yeah. Because I don't it's know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, it's not our thing. I need a subject matter expert to talk about long range content. Yeah. Unless literally the title of the video is Watch Jake Not Shoot Long Range yeah. Very Well. Watch Jake Miss a Lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that long winded rant is over. So we'll go ahead and move on. Guys, so here's the deal we get in uh, new guns and um, we're just going to free flow a little bit, uh, sh shoot a handful of drills. Um, the range master today was Simple Jack, so that explains some of what you're seeing in relation to the target. Uh, he has been reprimanded. Um, but we're just gonna kind of free flow, talk about okay. the, you know, so we're in the unique scenario here. We actually both um, have had a gun that we're uh, running for this. So it's actually a sample size of two, you know? Vast majority of the time, obviously you're shooting one gun. Well, how do we make lemonade out of these lemons here? How about the black circle at the bottom? Which what, one? <laughs> what is that, about a two incher? No, three that's incher? like four, isn't it? Look at the squares. They're one inch squares, so it's three. Yeah, two and a half, three. Copy. All right, how about we go a uh, bill drill on the on the black circle? Okay. Bill drills are nice because, hey, 2011s are meant to be sort of that shooting cheat code, right? Of like speed and accuracy, uh, sort of the pinnacle of that in a handgun. Okay, four one, hits, two misses. One flyer, two, two seven, two seven. Flyers. Uh, ah, yeah, one low, one high. Yeah, copy two seven seven. Let's see what okay. the old see what the old Irish Panther here can do. All right, trending a little low. Four flyers, two hits. I'm good with the group. The group is just a. a it needs to shift inch and a half up. The whole group just needs to change. Yeah. What was the What was the the badass time? <laughs> Three seventeen. Three seventeen. And your splits are. Three six, three two, three two, three zero, three zero. Okay, that's fine. That's that's. Uh, we'll, we might try that again on steel just for shits and gigs a little bit later. So okay. why don't we chat? Okay, so gun came in. Kind of what's what you know? Where are you at? Like round count wise? Like where where are we at? So I'm at <clears throat> plus or minus probably a hundred at a thousand. So I'm anywhere from nine hundred to eleven 1, hundred. Okay, so we're almost identical at yeah? this point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I usually try to do right around a thousand. So um, different ammo too which I think you did as well, uh -huh. 115s, 124s. I did 147 hollows. I did 147 spear gold dot. Fancy. Right, well I had old ammo, yeah. and I was like, why not, yeah, right? Sure. I had a 124 grain Hornady critical defense, and then I had some 147 hand loads that a buddy made for me that are uh, hollow point as well. Okay. And it fed all of it reliably. Cool. No issues, no malfunctions. Yeah. Um, the feed ramp on the barrel's uh, nice and polished, yep. um, which is one of the things that'll help it uh, reliably feed hollow points and just some of that sort of non, uh, you know, FMJ style rounds. So, um, okay, cool. All right, so do this. I'm gonna run a couple Mozambiques here. Okay, so two to the chest, one to the face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which of we this. can kind of get. I can actually reasonably uh, find that on uh, this poor man oh, down here. Simple Jack's face. Okay, here we go. Shoot it ready? Yep. Stand by. <laughs> okay. One just outside of the uh, left edge of the center black. Uh, I think head box would actually count. Actually, I'm just curious for my, because the skewed target. That would, you know, man, you could litigate the line break on this. This is- Where's it's, the it's, grease ring? It's right on the, the, on the, you know, it's right on that damn edge. Total of 232. Oh, flub that. Don't count those. All right, 262. Uh, again, if you're going for like A zones and shit like that, you're, I don't know where your head is to be honest. Um, Up that way. Well, we all have days where we shoot better than other. I'm, I'm shooting, I'd say, below my typical uh, threshold today. Um, we're gonna pause for one sec. We're gonna set up steel. Okay, so on my end of the equation, um, this was a filming cycle where uh, we had a very low uh, amount of time, about half the normal in between filming sessions. We, that's kind of how reviews work for us. They're kind of like in blocks where it's like dedicated block for these things. 
that dedicated block was really short this time. So uh, I had two weeks to actually shoot the thing. Same. Um, and so basically I had three range days. There were 250 rounds a piece prior to today. Today, call it a couple hundred. So I'm gonna guess, hey, we're roughly 950 to 1,000 rounds somewhere in that ballpark. Um, but gun came in. Um, there was already oil on it. So I was like, all right, cool. She's good. There's no point for me to do anything with that. All three range days, those 250 rounds came over the course of about 15 to 20 minutes. So they were like pretty heavy burn down sessions. Like yep. they're fast. Yep. Um, guns getting hot, all that kind of stuff. And that was just based on scheduling timing, just like no choice, got to burn it down. 115s, 124s, 147s from multiple manufacturers. And one of the cool things that I've kind of accumulated is mags from a bunch of different companies. So like the mag I was just running is the MBX Defender mag that the gun, uh, I believe comes with, don't quote me on that. It does. Um, it's the flush fit one. Yep. This is a different MBX mag. The one in the gun currently is a uh, standard staccato. I've had mags from Cabot, uh, TSOS mags, which are, uh, they're not actually made by TSOS and blanket on the uh, Checkmate. Um, so it's like, I've run mags from five to six different mag manufacturers, yeah. now granted, they might all be white labeled mags for all I know, but, oh, and Atlas mags. And so I've had zero malfunctions, period, including today. I did not clean the gun in those 750 rounds. Uh, I didn't even add oil to it. I literally was like, let's just see what it yeah. does. A cool. um, little bit later, we'll talk about why I think that is notable, just in regards to the fit and finish. Well, and while we're on the mags, I did have malfunctions, but it was mag related. Yeah. So my staccato mags were nose diving the rounds and causing two, three malfunctions max. Yeah. But it was all tied to the staccato mags. Yeah. And, and these guns sometimes can be, you know, 2011s inherently are more picky guns. Yeah. Because uh, you're dealing with race cars and it's like, hey, race cars want the right tires, right fuel. It's like, sure. you just gotta be aware of that. Yeah. I haven't, I, I've lucked out, I haven't had that. So, yeah. you know. Mine are both mag related. I'm not holding it against the gun. And then the MBXs have run flawlessly. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. MBX mags are always good. They're just, you just pay out the freaking ass Yes, for you do. You gonna do a build drill? Yeah, I'm gonna do a steel? build drill. Okay. So for me, that's a good clean cadence. Two, four, eight. First shot was in one, three, six. Then your splits are two, four, two, three, two, one, two, 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 two. Okay, so for me, that's like me shooting good right there. Okay. Um, here cool. go. I'll run you. Let's see what we got. Uh, two, six, eight. Close. Yeah. It's close yeah. heat that time. But let's see the splits, right? You don't care about that. First shot in 175, so it's slower than you, but okay. 20, 18, 19, 18, 18. Yeah, so you beat me on splits, I beat you on first shot. Yep. For roughly the same total time. I don't remember exactly where yeah. I was. Um, not, okay, one thing I haven't done yet. I don't know if you've done I have. this yet. Okay, so yeah. I'm actually curious. So this is my original Fowler. So this is the five inch. Um, Disclaimer on this, and this could sound braggy, but it's not in the context in which I mean it. They've come a long way since this gun. This was the first one that they ever made. Um, so this is like the first produced um, Fowler Vanta 9. So they've made a lot of progress since then. Yeah. Okay, this is like the original, but the curiosity for me is just to see, okay, the five inch versus the Commander. Granted, different dots. This one doesn't have a light, so it's not really apples to apples. I'm just close kinda, enough. just kind of curious from like a recoil impulse perspective. That one set. Okay. I'm gonna throw a couple. Yeah, give it a go. Okay. Huh. I have my two cents on it. What's your two cents? Man, trigger freeze central here. I, I, I'd be lying if I said that there was a lot I was picking up on there, if I'm okay. being honest, yeah. Th Do there's you feel not a lot one shoots up. slightly softer than the other? Well, the five inch should shoot slightly softer, but- It, it, it should. It, that That's kind of placebo effect for me. Yeah. Like I'm really not picking up a lot in the way of difference there. So I called Fowler and we talked about this. Mm -hmm. Our theory, cause I feel this commander shoots slightly softer and the theory is it's less moving mass. So the perceived softer sure. recoil is just less mass moving. Yeah. But I feel they're either on the same level or this is slightly softer. Yeah. Where do you think I got? Probably somewhere big and somewhere in Texas. It's Texas. It's big Tex. Big Tex. Yeah. 
that surefire. And you can see that, that bad boy's been used. She's Dude, been blasted she's up. been shot a little bit. Pretty good right now. I bought that before they sponsored our channel, which is how you know, I mean, sponsorships don't get better than that. When yeah. it's like, hey, I was a paying customer before you paid me back, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Reimburse me on yeah, my purchase. Yeah, reimbursed. I bought like three X300s at once. Uh, so they carry that, that's turbo, that's the good stuff. Right that's there. the good one. That's the good stuff. Um, Not much more expensive either. About 10 bucks on their site. No, More no. than the standard turbo. Really so. good. Um, they carry the, you know, the aim points and uh, I believe they're hollow sun dealer as well. Um, yep. So that, you know, they, they, they carry all kinds of good stuff there. Their uh, motto really is, hey, if it's, if it's not something we would use personally, we're not going to carry it. Uh, they actually shoot and train over there. They do actually more than I imagined. Yeah, like it's like they train required. It's actually yeah. like, if I remember what Ike said, it's like twice a year. I think it's like they have to take it's a awesome. training class. Like it's awesome. You have to be a shooter if you're going to work here, Very which cool. is cool. That's how you know it's good gear. Um, the code you guys can plug in, 1911SYN, aka 1911SYN. Um, that'll save you guys 10% off the store. Great shop. Uh, like I said, been customer for years. Um, prior to them sponsoring the channel. Good folks over there, fast shipping, all that good jazz. Appreciate the support, I'm with the show. Okay guys, uh, you're gonna have to jump into the comments. Two grown adults uh, approaching the age of 40. I'm- Plus be, 40. I'll be 40 at some point. Um, are trying to figure out how to attach a paper target to a base that is too narrow. So currently we have almost fused together two targets at the base. The problem is the cardboard is too narrow to attach the target. So we're about five minutes into this. Um, <laughs> and this is the best that we can currently come up with. <laughs> What's the point to this whole spiel? Education matters. And that's why we need your Patreon dollars is to really boost up the education fund uh, here at the 1911 Syndicate. Um, are these the guys you would want selling your house for you? I don't know. <laughs> Do you want that guy to be your real estate agent? If you do, we can help you with that. Uh, we'd love to help you. But seriously, um, public schools have failed us today. <laughs> Tremendously. And, um, and you went to a private school, right? Yeah, and that's yeah, shit. Yeah, I went that, to a public shit school. Too. So anyway, we can really use your sport, as you can clearly see here. Bump, bump. Throw a steeple over here. That one it's like arts and go. crafts <laughs> with functional idiots. There you go. That's as good as it's gonna get. Now we're gonna shoot the guns and talk about how they perform, <laughs> sadly. My fly's been down this whole filming session. Okay, everyone, so let's uh, get around to like, just kind of clinically banging through features and cool. uh, you know, all, all Walking that fun through the stuff. Gun. Yeah, giving you a tour of the gun. So um, price of these, I'll save a longer, well, no, fuck it, we're just gonna do it now. So um, price of these is 4,500. Literally, um, I was just talking with Fowler uh, uh, today, actually, and <laughs> so, the price of these will wind up going up. Don't know exactly when. Um, I'm just here to tell you, hey, that you, you're you're not in a long term era uh, of of those staying 45 hundo. Um, well, and you've been so trying to, be to convince him to go up, like yeah. in general, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I've actually been. Um, Which shocking, guys, that can happen. Not everything needs a price reduction. Yeah, right? a, as a. Um, guy that that enjoys this platform um I, I you know and i know you guys are going to probably demonize me in the comments for for this but it's just like i just said i, I don't think you're charging enough for these i i, I really don't like I, I think these should be at five grand as base price um and then add a little bit based on the features that you want um that may sound bizarre but it's like I try to look at things through an objective lens and I'm just like, I know what five grand gets you these days and I think that this is punching above its pay grade. Yeah, well, um, I mean, clearly, as we're about to go through. Yeah, something I'll tell you that, that kind of lends to that is, you know, yes, there's triggers, there's grips, there's all that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll give you the, the lowdown on that, but there's a little bit of an intangible value that's, that's built into this. So as we were talking about earlier with like other manufacturers, um, Logan, aka Logan Fowler, like um, still touches all these guns personally, does a lot of the work on them, but um, he had like a legit mentor when it came to this whole project. Um, yeah. So John Jardine uh, passed not that long ago, but was a, a legend inside of the, the 1911-20 limit space. Yeah. Like really one of the, like, the OGs, like very, very widely respected. Um, and that was Logan's mentor, not, not only in terms of, you know, working through design and all that kind of stuff, but figuring out what was gonna work and like learning properly how to make an old school tight fit, high you end. know, high, high end gun, you yeah. know? And, and it's just like, again, 
I respect that. It's, it's, he didn't just jump into the game. Like, I mean, this was, in, I mean, th this, the, the five inch, the original, I mean, this was in development for a long time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I like mean, he I knew went about through it. like a whole process of learning how to oh, do this, beginning to end, top to bottom. 100%. And he's yeah. kind of savant ish with it. Like, he's definitely very, very obsessive. So, anyway, I guess let's talk about fit and finish. So, tight gun, what do you think? Yeah. So, me being a Palmer Striker Fire guy, right? This being my first high end 2011, I had the again, affectionately called Glock of 2011, so it's Staccato back in the Which day. is a great gun. Great gun, guys. Just different. Um, I picked up a couple things on what you look for mm -hmm. when you get a new gun. Sure. I mean, I've been here, I don't know, 30 times when you get a new 2011 and you do your little ritual with it. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing I did when I got mine was kind of go through that stuff. Meaning, just trying to find any wobble, wiggle, shake in any direction, mm -hmm. at any way or any point yeah. in the gun itself. Yeah, yeah. There's none. Yeah, there's none. The gun's incredibly <laughs> tight. Yes. Like I was really cranking to see if I could find any movement anyway, and the gun is absolutely 100%, like the tolerances are ridiculously yeah, tight. Yeah, very tight fit gun. Right? Which, over time, loosen a little bit, which adds to just a smooth, even smoother gun, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So Th this gun will be better with 2,000 rounds on it than it will be with zero rounds on yeah. it. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, another big thing you check is like safety, like how stiff the safety is. Because yeah, you talked about just, how that breaks positive, you know, it's right. like there are safeties that are, they just never, you're, it's just kind of mushy on the way up uh -huh. or down where you're like, there's not that pop, there's not that security of like, my safety is up, my safety is off. You're just kind of like, mushy. I think I'm up, but like, I don't know. Yeah, just kind of mushy. Yeah. This safety was so tight. I mean, I'm getting a callus on my thumb already. Like yeah. it was yeah. obnoxiously tight to the, where I was like, this might be my only criticism of the gun. Mm -hmm. Now thousand plus rounds into it it's perfect yeah, she's I mean, it's in. broken in excellent um obviously the left-handed side which i don't ever use might be a little tighter but that's neither here nor there um the blending right as we talk about one of the things you always look for i see you grab a gun and you just look at the back strap especially if it's a pin back strap and see where those lines are what they look yeah. like is there anything right? here that's out to pinch you or yeah. you know hot spots or anything yeah. like that I have zero hot spots anywhere on this gun in any way, shape, or form. Same. Um, non-functional grip safety, which is, um, I'm pretty, I am a hundred percent on board with a non-functional grip safety as long as I have good positive retention on that thumb safety. Yeah. If that some thumb safety is like, a little mushy, you know, yeah. a little mushy or, or just not particularly tight. I'm kind of like, eh, I wouldn't mind having my grip safety, but it's like, hey, if I got really good retention on, on that thumb safety, I'm please don't have a functional grip safety would be my preference. Yeah. And it just aesthetically is pleasing. Uh, Great thing that. about these, um, especially coming from like Glock and stuff is a double undercut on your trigger guard. Mm -hmm. This comes standard from the factory. Very nice double undercut. Yeah. Again, blended really well where the like sharp edges are typically on a, on a double undercut. There's no sharp edges whatsoever. It's all beveled very nicely. Mm -hmm. I don't know the degree, but it's a very nice bevel. So your support hand isn't feeling like a 90 degree hot spot yeah. in any way, shape or form. Yeah, so. yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, on the note of fit and finish, I would just tell you guys, it, 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 it's important that you hear this stuff sometimes of, of like, hey, a gun that is tight fit like this. To be frank with you, I think ours are probably a little tighter than most of what's gonna ship. Yep. Um, because they're, they're, when I first got it, I was like, this gun's probably gonna have a break-in period. I was actually a little nervous because I was like, man, we only got two weeks. So it's like, I'm mentally going, I might have to burn like a grand uh, of ammo, uh, mm -hmm. a thousand rounds on a thousand dollars, a thousand rounds of ammo in this, just to like get her broken in, get some of those kinks worked out. I've had none of it. It actually kind of shocked me to be honest. Like if you were gonna have little weird stuff on this because you'll notice that um, that barrel lockup's really tight. So it's like, you apply that little bit of pressure and you're like, I'm still more, 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 more. And then it Unlocked. goes. There's that that, yep. that old school, more so on a 45, like that barrel pop right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're babying that slide home and all, like you'll even see right now, you're not gonna go into battery. So the malfunctions you would be likely to have if you're gonna have any is probably either stovepipe or failure to go into battery just because the slide needs that extra little bit of momentum just to like get everything like coming, coming out of that, that yep. hard lockup. Um, that is in many ways a flex. Like when you make a hard gun or a, like a hard lockup like that tight gun, it's like, hey, that's, that's a manufacturer or a builder kind of going like, yeah, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, but it's just like, hey, if you get a gun that's that tight, you just need to be 
brace for the fact that, hey, you might have a few hundred rounds where you're just working through some shit. I haven't, um, but you you might. You yeah. know, be aware of it. Yeah, I've there's been no break in for mine, even with how tight we've already gone over. So. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else we got on frame? So uh, metal grip uh, on, on this uh, aluminum grip, not steel. At this price point, for me, a metal grip starts to become pretty like not debatable. Yeah, anymore. mandatory. Yeah, yeah, like there's minor, minor exceptions, but it's like generally speaking, I need a metal grip at, at this price mm -hmm. point. Um, and it's cut as like a CCW style grip. So you'll notice this, um, I don't know, just the way it's cut. I don't know how to describe it. I guess more just more of like a carry cut. Um, so the mags that fit flush are these MBX Defender mags. These are ungodly expensive. These are like 130 bucks. Um, but they do fit flush um, in the gun. Obviously, it'll still take your 17s, yeah. your 20s, all that kind of stuff. But hey, if you want the flush fit mags, um, they are a little bit spendy. I think it's going to come with one mag, and then you can just buy more yep. or whatever. But there. the aesthetic, I mean, aesthetically, that is the Very absolute pleasing. way to go. Very yep. pleasing. And the grip texture, for those of you who are like, you know, is it grippy enough? So this is kind of in that, uh, to me, it's just in the perfectly adequate ca category. It's like, hey, it's not really trying to do one thing in particular. It's not trying to, like, be a competition gun where you're like, it's just like vice grip aggressive, mm -hmm. but it's also not, uh, you know, I've got like my Jacob Gray 2011 back there, which is smooth. a commander like this and the whole thing's smooth. It's not that, this is just in that in-between zone that for yeah. me, it just does everything I needed to do. Yeah, I'd like a little more texture, but that's just, I mean, I'm yeah. really trying to split hairs to find something I don't sure. like about the gun. Yeah, right? no, so. um, yeah, no, um, totally fair. Um, other little things that I think are at least worth taking note of, um, so like, especially a gun like this, that's almost like a hybrid of like, yes, you could carry it, you could run a competition. Like you do kind of whatever you want with this. Like this is in that tweener thing. Yeah. Um, but a fairly light trigger at like two to two and a quarter pounds. You just go, especially with a non-functional grip safety, you're like, hey, you know, like we're good though. Like um, that, you know, from a safety protocol perspective, uh, without going all into it, it's like, I know for a fact that Logan has like done his due diligence um, uh, Beating a, in a painful way yeah. to make sure that like, yeah, these bad boys are good. Um, they're not gonna go off. It's, you know, you could drop the gun, like you're, you're, you're good to go. So just be aware of that. Greetings from the future, everyone. I am making the executive decision. We're gonna add some footage into the video here momentarily. The footage is of the Vanta 9 going through a drop test. Uh, quite a few drop tests, as a matter of fact. Some of you may know over the past several weeks, there's been some, uh, you know, just different videos and things discussing guns being drop safe and that 19, 1911s and 2011s are sort of the main culprit of guns that are not drop safe. So I'm gonna show you the clip here. The only thing that I would add in is like, please don't take this as the gospel. This is a sample set of one. It was on a gun that was being built. Um, no special modifications were made to the gun that I'm about to show you that are not made to all the guns that go out the door. So please just understand, hey, uh, uh, this is not legal advice or anything like that. We're just showing you some footage of a torture test. We got about a 22 round MBX mag fully loaded with 115s and we have a primed case in the chamber. No powder, obviously, no bullet. We have an optic to add a little bit of weight in. Uh, I took the safety off of this side because it I dropped this thing about 30 times already and it got all mangled up. Um, this pull is around two and a half pounds. I'm just gonna drop this about six feet, muzzle down and see if we can get it to ignite. Nothing, went to half cock, cock it again. About seven and a half feet, nothing. Still cocked that time. I think the first time it may have smacked the hammer on the way down or when it landed. So I'm about six foot. This is about a foot over my head. We're at half cock again. Let's do it from about six feet. That was perfect muzzle down. You can see where I already smacked the concrete. Half cock again. I'm gonna do one last time. Way up. Half cock again, just to prove it, it'll fire. Um, I like the little thumb texture oh, pads. Yeah, that was grip. one of the points I was gonna bring up. Yeah. yeah. Little index points or thumb texture, thumb pads, whatever you guys would like to call them. Yeah. Are on both sides of the gun, right? So if you're a lefty, your right thumb's gonna sit here. If you're a righty, left thumb's gonna sit on that same mm -hmm. thing. Um, this texture on these would be like what I would one on this if I was going to change anything. Sure. Because it, it is, they're bitey, your thumb. Yeah. 
right. immediately sits there, grips it, you feel it, it's positive. Yeah. I like that. Um, little sidebar, I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you lock your slide back to the rear, you have these front serrations here, mm -hmm. and the back line of those front serrations lines up perfectly with the front line of that index point. Here we go. You see that? Say what you're saying. Oh, you're sorry. Saying. So when you like bring the gun all the way back. Oh, I got gotcha. you. You see those lines, how they I meet gotcha. up? I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but basically. Yeah, when your slide's all the way back. When your slide's all the way back, the front serrations on the upper part of the slide meet up exactly yeah. with that texture line. Right. Now, it has to be on purpose. There's no way that there would be that. Yeah mistake that that's meticulous but yeah. little details like that it's cool i kind of nerd out on right? it's cool i don't know um uh on the frame so we have uh so you got a surefire x300a model yep which i did not think mine was going to take so i threw on a b model mm -hmm. just tight as shit it was ridiculously tight at first it's loosened up a little bit now but it sits on there fine like it has a little bit of play okay but it's it's neither here nor there for yeah. me. Yeah, B model is probably your safer bet. Mm -hmm. um, a model, it sounds like, hey, you could probably force it if you needed to. Yeah. Um, B model is probably the, the security bet on that. If we come up top, we look at the uh, ambidextrous uh, thumb safety, also, by the way, standard. Yep. Um, if we come up top to the slide, a lot going on there. A um, lot of serrations, uh, a very busy look. So I'll just tell you in, in it's a busy gun, and that could be some people's criticism if they're going to have something. You'd be like, "There's a, it's, it's a busy gun." I agree with you. It's a busy gun, and that's one of my favorite things about you like it, it is the look of it. Yeah. Um, to me, that's one of the best looking 2011s on the market. I mean, you have horizontal lines with angled lines with cutouts, lightning cuts, top serrate. Uh, like there is a lot going on, but it doesn't seem overwhelming to me. I'm about it. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm big about it. Um, it's like there's so much to take in, and it's like it all just works really well together for me. Um, there's a lot of little things that it's like, again, little things to pay attention to. So uh, bull barrel, fluted barrel, though, right? Mm -hmm. um, fluted guide rod, something you guys aren't going to be able to see. Um, this is the shave weight. It also can help uh, even disperse a little bit of like oil and things um, so that stuff kind of gets trapped in there as you start shooting the gun, it kind of moves oil around. There's a purpose behind it. I yeah. talked to Fowler about this, right? Like the little, the cutouts are exactly that. It can be little oil reserves. And mm -hmm. as you're shooting, it can get dispersed with throughout the gun. So yeah, yeah. there's yeah. some function to the aesthetic. Oh yeah, this is all very, very well thought yep. through. Um, guns come red dot cut, uh, you need to basically add a plate to your order when you order a gun. The plates are like 130 bucks or something like that. Not a big deal. Um, but we both got acros. acros yep. You can do a RMR, which is also an SRO or RMR HD. Um, there was another one. Steiner MPS and the Hollow Sun 509. 509. Or you can just get a fixed iron sight plate as well if you're just like, I'm old and I don't, I'm not willing to try a red dot. Okay, cool. You can just get an iron sight plate if you like. Um, that's totally fine. Uh, holster compatibility. Uh, my, I've run mine on uh, the light bearing one from QVO. Run okay. totally fine in that. Yeah. Um, that's the holster that, that, you know, I'm good to go. I can tell you guys that'll work. I don't know about it. For outside else. the waistband? For OWB. Okay. Yeah. Haven't what tried. about IWB? Haven't tried. Okay, yeah. cool. An interesting thing that I found because when I get a new gun, I go through the plethora plethora yeah, of for, holsters uh, that I have and see if it'll fit anything. Wouldn't fit in anything except an HKP30 holster. Fascinating. Fascinating, right? So yeah. I have a G-code P30 holster that is what I run my Langdon P30 in. And that's what I've been running this inside the waistband. Well, that's just crazy talk. <laughs> Dude, it, it clips in, it doesn't fall out, great retention. The only downside, it doesn't cover the thumb safety. So. Yeah, and again, if I've got good positive retention on that safety, I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable with that. Yeah. I've got my daily carry 1911 on the wall back there. Typically, when I when I throw it on in my holster, I just do a simple thing. I just I just pull just, up on just, it. Just just pull up on my safety once it's in my pants, and I'm just like, cool. Yeah, it's up. Right. Yeah. That way, as it was down, what would just happen right there? You go thumb safety's up. We're good to go. It's no different than like if you have a like a Glock and the ejector is sticking out a little bit. You know, a piece of brass is in there. Mm -hmm. Like when I holster a gun, I'll kind of run my finger on that and be like, okay, yeah. yeah. Obviously, press checks are advice, but you guys get where we're going. Yeah, you get where we're going. All right, so that's a little bit of tour of the gun. We'll take you to some final thoughts here. Okay, so some final thoughts. Um, what do you got? 
So coming from, you know, my first 2011 being a Staccato, going back to some Palmer Striker Fire stuff, now to this, like, it's more gun than I deserve. I'm incredibly humbled that they were willing to do this project with mm -hmm. us. And the gun shoots stupid nice. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I have legitimately told them, like, I'm going to find something wrong with the gun, and you guys are just going to be okay with it because we're friends. I can't find anything wrong with the gun, man. Yeah. I'm incredibly happy with it. I'd be happy, this happy, if not more, if I paid for it even. Because mm -hmm. I know it's money well spent. Yeah. Um, but I absolutely love the gun. I plan on making it my main EDC range gun for quite some time. Yeah. yeah. Badass. Um, let's see. Um, I w so I, I think something I said earlier probably lends pretty well to, to my thoughts of it, which is I argued with the manufacturer that they're not charging enough for their gun. Um, that should tell you something there. Um, I really do believe that to be true. I think it's a $5,000 all day long. Um, I think it's probably closer to 5500 If you want to know what I think probably the the real price should be based on the market right now. I think you're probably getting about a grand off of this. Like I said, that price is not going to stay forever. It is for now. Yeah. Um, but so final rating. What do you think? Where do you think I'm at? Where do I think you're at? Yeah. Um, because nothing in life is ever good enough for Jake, guys, as you know from watching the channel. I, I say you're giving it a solid A, like a 95. So for for me, an A would be the the top. A plus is almost just like just stop being a kiss ass. Like if you get if you get an A plus, it's like something was okay. like you you bribed a teacher or something. Um, so for the first time, I'm gonna give something a flatline A. Flatline A. Yeah, I, okay. I, I really and especially for you guys hearing and, and we're pretty pretty candid about it of just like hey, I know the people there like you know, but like I said, hey, I bought this gun back in the day because I really liked it. But it's like you guys could think that there's a bias to that, and that's fine. You can be skeptical if you want, but it's just like I've really tried to find things to be critical of, and I I really am just striking out on finding much to go. But here's the problem, I I ain't got one. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, I uh, my final rating uh, is going to tie yours. It's an A. Yeah. Now, does that say a lot coming from a Palmer Striker Fire gun? Probably not. But the gun shoots incredibly nice. Yeah. Like it, it's it's just perfect. It, 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 I, I think it's still in that sleeper category. I know that they uh, the the five inches have historically been really hard to get. I know that they're ramping up production like yep. quite significantly right now. So I do think that these are going to be more. Available, you're probably mm -hmm. still gonna have some wait time. I don't know what it is, don't ask me. Um, but it's like, hey, they're ramping up production. I think these are gonna be more available. So, um, yep. hey, take that for what you will. You know, yep. if you guys are in the market for a mid tier, I don't know, you might, you might really give this one some thought. So, that's it. I got nothing else. I got nothing else, Jake. All right, cool. We'll see you guys next week.